Hello friends and uh, welcome to my channel. So this is going to be the fourth part or the fourth installment of my stable diffusion uh, basics video. So we have done three videos uh, that was some time back but now I am uh, back to making videos and this is the fourth installment. So we are still in uh, automatic 1111 and we are still in uh, the text to image screen. I have already shown you how you can uh, write prompts and how you can uh, change the the dimension of the uh, the images that you generate so today i'm going to show you how you can download uh, models and which folder that you need to save them in order to uh, use it uh, over here in the stable division checkpoint uh, part of the user interface so first of all uh, where do we get our uh, models so the best place to find models is in cvti so let's go to cvti.com so in CVTI, there are many, many models, many, many LoRa's, lots of things are there. So let's go to the models. Okay, so we are inside CVTI and as you can see, some of these images are blurred off because of NSFW uh, content. And uh, you can see all the LoRa's here, but in order to see only the models, we can uh, click here and just select checkpoint and deselect LoRa's. And soon we're going to see only the models. So as you can see, there are a number of models. Uh, some of them are realistic, some of them are kind of cartoonish. So let's find out something that we like. Uh, let's see. So there is this model which I really wanted to check out. So let's try to find them here. So this is a juggernaut model. Okay, so you can see that there are various uh, versions of this. So let's just download uh, the latest one. So you can just download it from so you can just download it by clicking here. So I'm going to uh, download it in my uh, desktop for now. And then I'll show you where you can place these model files so that you can uh, start using it inside Automatic 11. Now remember something, some models, for example, this model has some additional files. For example, this model actually includes a config file and it has a recommended VAE. So let's download the config file as well. So let's click here. So the config file, let's download it as well. And it also has a recommended VAE. So let's see what the VAE file is. So this is the recommended VAE file. So I'm just going to save it in my desktop for now. And wait for these files to download. Okay, so the files have downloaded. So just need to uh, copy it or cut it. And then I go to my automatic 1111 11 folder, which is uh, here. And inside stable diffusion web UI, you need to go to the models folder and you need to go to the stable diffusion folder inside it and just paste it so this is where you want to paste your files and then go to automatic 11 11. automatic 11 11 interface and you refresh this by uh, pressing this button so so now we see that this uh, model is actually in the uh, interface so you can actually start uh, prompting using this interface now whenever you bring a new model I would suggest that you go to the CVTI page of that model and check out some of the uh, example prompts to get a feel of what this uh, model can actually do for you. So let's go to the CVTI page of this uh, model. Okay, so we are in the model page and let's try to recreate the first model. So let's click here and as you can see uh, all of the prompts and negative prompts and everything that was used to create this model is there. So all you need to do is copy the generation data by clicking here. By the way, all of these were shown in the first session of our AI Arts Mastery uh, course. And so if you want to learn more about these things, and if you're not a part of the AI Arts Mastery uh, online course, then you can join in our second session, with, which will start perhaps in a few months. It's a six weeks course uh, where we take classes every Sunday and teach you about the basics of uh, stable diffusion and AI Arts including prompting and many of the extensions. So anyway, uh, we've copied the generation data. So we go here and we just paste it here and then just click on this button. So it will take all of this generation data and, and place all the elements in the right place. So now we have sampling steps of 30. We have the right width and the height for this generation data. We have the right upscale and everything is basically set up. We also have the same seed set up. So if you just press a generate button, you will see the same image. Now, before I do that, I'm just going to turn off high res fix because you don't want to upscale it right now. And so we're just going to generate it. So you can see that we got actually the same image back using uh, the prompt data. 
So this is a very good starting point uh, for you to try and understand uh, this model. So you can see from here what kind of negative keywords actually work the best for this model and what kind of images or what kind of prompting style actually works. And if you want, you can actually work with this prompt style. You can set the seed to random or to minus one for random seed. And you can change some of the terms of this prompt and try to get interesting uh, looking results. So let's say I want to change it from a muscular bearded guy to a uh, uh, slim golden haired foxy lady. And I'll keep everything same. And let's see what we get. So you get a very interesting image. This is actually a very nice image uh, of a girl who is in some kind of a metal armor. So you can go in and make changes inside this same prompt and try to generate different images or you can try something completely different. So let me try to generate some mermaids. Okay, so we got a portrait picture. Of course, you don't see the rest of her body because it's actually a portrait shot. But if you would have asked it to create a wide angle shot or an underwater shot, maybe we'd have found out that it wasn't actually a mermaid. So let's try that. Let's remove some terms like streets. And uh, let's remove the glowing blue eyes. And uh, let's remove steel metal rust. And let's see what we get. So now we kind of got an underwater image. So this is the way you can download new models from CVTI and do various experiments on the provided prompt and try to come up with interesting images without having to think too hard about coming up with the right kind of prompt. So we'll end this video today and, and tomorrow in the second part of this video, we'll talk about ClipSkip, how ClipSkip works and how you can actually generate creative results by changing the ClipSkip. So we'll see you in the next video. Till then, goodbye.